it's an experiment. So it's either zero or it's the, what people say, the black hole of value, right? Like everyone who wants to be lazy and secure, you know, will store their value in, in Bitcoin. And now that those ETFs are live, they stepped into the trap of Bitcoin, basically, right? It, it, it is a Trojan horse. There is no in-between end destination for Bitcoin. It's either zero or that entire thing. Bram Canstein needs very little introduction. He started one of the fastest growing Bitcoin only podcasts last year and has reeled in some incredible guests to discuss all the reasons why Bitcoin is changing the game for millennials and more. Bram's approach focuses on how your philosophy for life changes on a Bitcoin standard and how that mindset shift has a ripple effect throughout society. In this video, we'll dive deep into the world of Bitcoin, an experiment some believe could either be the black hole of value or a monumental failure. But what makes Bitcoin so different? How does it defy the principles that have governed our financial system for centuries? And why are some of the world's largest financial institutions, like BlackRock, beginning to place their bets on it? As we explore these questions, we'll uncover the truths and misconceptions about Bitcoin, revealing how it could reshape our future, similarly to how fire revolutionized human civilization. But can Bitcoin truly become the currency of the future, or is it destined to be another passing trend? Join us as we navigate the chasm of adoption, where the fate of this digital asset hangs in the balance, and discover why the answer to this question might just change everything you think you know about the world. But before we do that, I want to introduce our sponsors, Stampseed, The Orange Bill App, and Swan. Our partners are businesses and people that we respect and our products that we at Bit Intelligence personally use. You're watching 21 Voices. Sometimes when you think about Bitcoin, you end up in, you, you can end up in a place that's like really big, like really high level where you are like, yeah, this is like the biggest thing to ever happen in the past, I don't know, since the invention of fire, right? That's what Fidelity, for example, says. Like when you think of that, it's so, it's, it's huge. And it's really hard to accept that you, through your own rational thinking, that you ended up in that place with that conclusion. You are consuming right now. Investing is consuming. Investing is not the thing that you invest in. It's another person's product. And you can do that with the risk attached, of course. But you can also invest in the creation of a thing by yourself. And so that's the difference right now. That's why people invest and buy all this stupid nonsense instead of saving a bit more energy together and then build. I think that's the purpose of the humans is that we build together. We make things better. The fact that things do not get better, although we can arguably say that we've been the furthest along with technology right now, it's still not better. A, a, a bread is more expensive and worse in quality than a bread 60 years ago. And people laugh about that, right? Like a bread was 25 cents and now it's $4 or euros. Like that, that does not make sense. That, that goes against the whole motivation of people is to make things better and improve it with technology. And the fact that that has not been the case, that is also like one of the signals. That's because the money that is used to value those things in is debasing it. So. Uh, I love the quotes by Jeff Booth who talks about that technology is inher inherently deflationary. Things become cheaper and more accessible to people. But if the money that we use is inflationary, that cancels each other out. And so I feel people will get more time on a more honest ledger, on a more honest money to build instead of consume. Eventually, when you get it, you're like, oh, wow, this makes a lot of sense. But it's very, very hard. It's very hard to get there. And it's definitely not about intelligence. It's about how you can challenge your own own beliefs and be open to new ideas and, and accept that you don't know everything. And I would invite everyone to do that. Yeah. And when you talk to other people with different backgrounds or different ages and or different experiences in life or different geographical locations and if they end up in the same place with their own way of thinking, that kind of legitimizes my way of thinking, right? Like, it, it's not weird. I'm not alone. There's other people that are like that. And I think just recognizing that for myself was super valuable. And so, yeah, that was kind of the point where I was like, okay, 
I want to educate my generational peers. So I was 30, I had a mortgage, I was working at a bank in like digital innovation. And at one point a colleague said, did you know that the money in the bank is not yours? And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> sorry, what are you talking about? I was pretty shook. Like, I didn't know that, right? But I was participating in the system. And he was like, yeah, uh, we had lunch. And then we talked for an hour and he explained it to me. Like fractional reserve banking. That you, when you, you know, put your money in the bank, you basically lend it to the bank. And the bank goes out to try and make more money. If they don't, uh, you get the bill. If they do, you don't see any upside, basically. And that's how all the, um, lots of the crises, like, start, right? So I walked away from that lunch feeling like I'm an idiot, incapable but aware, you know, like I knew that I didn't understand what I was participating in. And at that moment, that kind of like shame, I think, motivated me to go into this further. And Bitcoin gives the incentive back to deliver actual value and to think about, is that what I'm trying to do to deliver that value? Is that a valuable to other people? If no, I have to work harder. If I don't want to do that or, or I decide that this is not my trade, then I have to do something else. But that's a, that's a fair exchange, right? Like you try, you fail, you do something else, basically. But the fiat money, you know, we just talked about how it degrades your, you know, debases the energy that's, that's stored in it when you deliver work. Therefore, you don't even try to deliver real value because if the... If the reward is shitty, why, why would you deliver m more value than what that is worth? And that's, uh, I, I totally agree with that. If you look at architecture from the 30s, it's way prettier than architecture from the 80s. And I think that is the real life manifestation of the rewards for that work being, uh, being debased. And yeah, so if you look at younger people as well, like if you... If you don't have the idea that, oh, once I finish school or my education, I can do something that I actually enjoy doing, that that, al that already is a pretty depressing like thought into the future again. So in, it's not only the energy that's debased in the future, like the money energy, but it's also, I don't know, is that the life energy that's the base towards the future and then you're 17 and you have to figure it out. Same conclusion, right? Like it's, it's not how it's supposed to be. Please bear with us for a quick message from our sponsors. These videos take a lot of time to make and we've partnered with brands we trust like Stampseed and the Orange Pill app in order to get the funding we need to bring you these videos every week. Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stampseed is fireproof, rust-proof, impact-proof, and easy to hide. It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. When I finally got Bitcoin, it hit me like a lightning bolt. It was the currency of the future, the only money that truly mattered. But there was a problem. I didn't know anyone else that thought like me. That is until I discovered the Orange Pill app. Suddenly I was connected with a network of like-minded Bitcoin enthusiasts right in my own city. The Orange Pill app is more than just a social network. It's a community of passionate individuals determined to change the world, one Satoshi at a time. This series is brought to you by Swan and created by Bit Intelligence. Remember to like this video and subscribe to both our channels for more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching. I ha I've had like three uh, 80% uh, you know pullback so like now I still feel it when it goes down but my my understanding is just way way bigger so I do I do feel it and I still have to fault like okay what's what's going on here I'm reminded again of like oh yeah I know I, I know what this is like and that and that also builds people use the word conviction right but in stocks conviction I think is a dirty word it's like oh yeah of course Eventually, it's going to go up. This is going to be the thing. But the conviction in Bitcoin for me is more about what is my understanding of what this is. I know that I ended up at a certain place of understanding before. And the fact that I'm a bit frightened now is more ego than than my, my rational thinking, right? And so then I look at other people to just hear their thoughts again. And that helps me to restructure my thoughts at that moment and then... You know, I'm good again because the base layer of Bitcoin, it, it doesn't change, right? So whatever you see in a, in a 
price fluctuations or any type of FUD from, you know, whatever government uh, type outlet, the thing doesn't change. That's the whole beauty of Bitcoin. It's just a set of rules that more than 15,000 computers at the nodes around the world agree to execute. And that is it. Did that change? No. Okay. Then it's still the same thing. Still the same time chain. Yeah. Yeah, I always viewed Bitcoin as a... It's an experiment. So it's either zero or it's the, what people say, the black hole of value, right? Like everyone who wants to be lazy and secure, you know, will store their value in, in Bitcoin. And you can store value in other things, right? But then you take more risk and that's, that choice should be there. And that choice is not there now, right? So it's either zero or it's everything. I always looked at it at that. And now that those ETFs are live, I, so, you know, I, I don't have a finance background, but I came to realize that they stepped into the trap of Bitcoin, basically, right? It, it, it is a Trojan horse. They are coming for the greed aspect. They do know what this is. Like BlackRock perfectly knows what this is. And that's also a high signal. That is why they moved, because one lag is in the old system that they really profited from. And there's one lag now in this new system that could replace that other thing. So they're milking the cash cow from the old system and they're establish establishing their foot in that, in that new system, right? But th that's based on the greed, like we can make money, we can save ourselves. But at one point, and this is already, we are already there, I think, this is not going away. So they trap themselves into committing more to this thing called Bitcoin. And that is why it's not going to zero again. So it will be the black hole of value. There is no in-between end destination for Bitcoin. It's either zero or that entire thing. And, and we are in, I think it's clear it's going to be that entire thing. And where we are now, I feel it's kind of in this chasm, right, of adoption, like we are here with 2,000 people, that's nothing. You know, you walk out of the stadium and there's people who have no clue what's going on in the venue, right? And so it is, uh, it's a dirty sentence, right? Still early, but the fact that the ETF, like that big financial institutions adopted an idea that was released on an internet forum 15 years ago is absolutely crazy. That's... If you think about that, just really think about that for longer than just what I just said. Like, that is crazy. Why would they ever do that? They would only do that if it has merit, if it could become that thing. No half-ass end destination, but the thing that we all think it's going to be. That is why they are there. And a second thought attached to that is like, this company is not one, it's not one entity. It's not an organism uh, where Larry Fink says, oh, we go... We go to the right now, we're gonna put that. No, it's a chain of individual people who sign off and do their own due diligence and then they decide to to move that direction. And so they know what this is and that's why they are one leg in that. But we are in this chasm where they know, unfortunately the finance bros know uh, and we know, but not enough people know. But there's gonna be a point where probably the price is going to go up like crazy. And I, I hope that is still on time for more, for more people. But I, I hope that more people will adopt it than, than the, the financial institutions, because then we really have the, the power, right? Time frame very, very hard. But I do, I do think before, within 10 years, 100%. Bitcoin is not just another financial asset. It's a radical departure from the systems we've relied on for generations. Bram paints a vivid picture of a world where Bitcoin could either become the ultimate store of value or fade into obscurity if it fails to fulfill its promise. The journey to understanding Bitcoin is not just about grasping its technical aspects. It's about challenging our deeply held beliefs about money, value, and trust. The question, what is money, is truly one of the greatest intellectual pursuits of this century. And as the financial world begins to take Bitcoin seriously, we find ourselves at a crossroads where the choices we make now could ignite a revolution 
forever altering the course of human history. It's clear that Bitcoin is teetering on the edge of something monumental. The stakes couldn't be higher, and the future of value, power, and innovation hangs in the balance. Which side of history will Bitcoin land on? The answer could redefine everything you think you know about the world. Stay tuned and remember to subscribe for the latest recaps, insights, and films about all things Bitcoin. This is 21 Voices. If you want to watch another episode, try this one here.